I'm making a video. Girl like me. guys what do you think of my new intro i worked really hard on this to make sure it's completely original and true to my brand and honestly i just can't imagine how embarrassing it would be if someone used the exact same canva template as me and i'm i'm sorry what what's that anora also uses this intro and marissa what i no! Oh my god, no! Why is everyone copying me? Why are you so <laughs> obsessed with me? I can't even do it. I can't do it. <laughs> Today, we are reacting to Anora's channel re-rebrand and her change.org petition. But first, let's just focus on her re-rebrand for a second. Overall, I just want to say that this rebrand is it's fine. Certainly it is way, 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 way better than the last rebrand she did, which was... Oof. Also, do you think that Anora and Brandy are aware that they copied Marissa? You know, the woman that they refer to as not another house whore? Because something tells me that they probably don't. <laughs> and I love that so much. <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, as for the petition, it's to quote, hold parents accountable for exploiting their kids on social media for monetary gain. It is quite the mouthful, ambitious, and ultimately pointless. But let's go through it together, shall we? It begins with, we, the undersigned, are deeply concerned about the alarming trend of parents exploiting their children on social media for monetary gain. Okay, valid concern. Lots and lots of folks in our community are concerned, but it's also, besties, it's not illegal uh, to make videos with your kids in it for money. <laughs> as long as you're not breaking laws or terms of service or community guidelines. So I hear you. I do, I hear you, but yeah, your moral, and that's the key word here, moral concern and objection to it is just that. It's a moral concern and objection, but let's continue. Maybe I'm, I'm just, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. It is disheartening to see young children being used as commodities for likes, shares, and sponsorships on social media platforms while their childhoods are being taken away from them. Sure, definitely there are children being exploited in very harmful ways that is impacting their well-being, including their right to have a normal childhood. No argument there, none whatsoever, but not all of them are. <laughs> So I wouldn't have used a blanket statement, personally. Also, don't you also use kids in your content, Anora? Because I could have sworn you do. You know what, let's just take a look. Let's take a look just in case I'm wrong and I'm just being a hater ass bitch because you know what, totally possible. Oh, yep, 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 that looks like you definitely do. So my question for you, Anora, is this exploitation or does it not count because you're not the parent? Because I'm just curious, I'm trying to understand what does exploitation mean on social media when it comes to kids? Some clarification would be super helpful. Let's continue. Next paragraph. It is high time that parents who exploit their children for monetary gain on social media platforms are held accountable for their actions. Why? You have literally given no comprehensive reason for them to be held accountable, except that they're making money from having their children in their content. And because some of them are also bad. Look, I'm not necessarily disagreeing, but usually, usually arguments have a foundation to it, a support system, strong points that can be 
argued to sway someone's opinion. You, you catch what I'm saying here? Like, if you wanna know why your mission statement has been unsuccessful so far, this is why, Honora. I'm just saying, this is why. Also, I can't help but notice the use of being held accountable for their actions. Ah, oh, that's just, it's so familiar sounding. Where have I heard that? Oh, me, I've heard, I, that's what I've been saying the whole time. Yes, let's move on. These parents are putting their children at risk of exploitation. Wait, I thought they are being exploited. Now they're at risk of being exploited? I don't understand. Do you mean something else like trafficking or kidnapping or? I'm confused. Please clarify. Cyberbullying. Valid, but that's a concern regardless, right? And invasion of privacy. Also fair, but also a problem, regardless of whether the parent's platform is monetized. So again, yeah. They are also promoting a toxic culture of self-promotion. New question, what is wrong with self-promotion exactly? We, we want our children to promote themselves, right? It's part of building self-esteem and confidence and communication skills. Why is that a bad thing? Counter example, when you do a job interview, you're self-promoting yourself, right? You're, you're explaining what your skill sets are, what your work experience is, why you think you would be good for the job, what you're bringing to the table, ways that you're looking to grow in your career and how you think that company could do that. You are self-promoting yourself. Technically, this change.org petition is self-promotion. You are promoting yourselves. Poorly, granted, but you are, right? That's self-promotion. So what I don't understand is why is this bad? Why is self-promotion bad? Because it's occurring on a public platform, the same platform where you are doing the same thing? You're aware that public speaking is also a thing that they teach in school, right? Again, I don't understand what your point is. You really should have had someone read this before you posted it. Okay, we're just, we're gonna, we're gonna take a, just a quick deep breath. Just a, inhale the positivity and Exhale the pettiness. Okay, let's continue. And materialism, which can have negative long-term effects on the mental health and well-being of these children. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but again, what is wrong with materialism? Don't answer that because you don't actually need to. I am well aware of how specifically the Alicia Doherty Hay community really fucking hates how much money she spends on her. But is materialism inherently immoral? Just because you object to it doesn't make it wrong or illegal. <laughs> also, materialism in any actual harmful form tends to be an issue related to wealth and privilege and status. Generally, you know, the average working fucking person, their materialism is not hurting them or anyone else. It is, if anything, helping them achieve a happier life. Having a more comfortable bed, having multiple sets of matching sheets, having like little nice decorations around their house, that could all be classified as materialism because it's a broad fucking concept. And that if that brings happiness to their lives, why is that a bad thing? Again, you're pushing moral opinions onto things that are amoral. They don't have a moral alignment. You realize that, right? So again, what is the actual argument here? And what are the so-called long-term effects of these kids' mental health and well-being exactly? You, specifically in your language, say may have, which means that it's not conclusive. I mean, obviously. So unless there's actual research and data supporting this, this is again a fucking opinion. You are morally objecting to materialism that results from online social media exploitation. Uh, okay, sure, whatever, I guess, you know? We urge you to take immediate action and introduce strict policies that hold parents accountable for exploiting their children on social media platforms for monetary gain. We suggest the following actions. But what about non-parents? Because this, this only addresses parents, but what about grandparents? What about siblings? What about teachers or friends or strangers like you and 
DCP and Radiant Brit and myself and anyone else who shares content about children on their social media, specifically as a commentary channel, for example. What about us? Why only parents? What does a parent mean? Like legal guardian or just birth parent? What about adoptive parents? What is the thresholds here? You needed to find the language way better. I thought you were working with a lawyer. What happened? I mean, I heard some things, but uh, yeah, I feel like if you were still working with a lawyer, quotation fingers, they would be helping you with this kind of thing. I just, I think that would be what would be happening, so. And also strict policies for something that isn't illegal. Just, okay, wrapping my brain around that. Also, what policies? What does that even mean? Are you talking about laws? Are you talking about policies enforced by the social media companies? Trying to understand. Honestly, it might help to expand on what you mean by policy. Ideally, with an actionable outline of how to implement something like that, because depending on what you're asking for, we're talking about fucking years before this could even be made into reality. And that's assuming that everyone is going to agree with you and spoilers, they probably aren't. So I might just kind of, you know, stretch that out a little bit more, put a little bit more detail in there. But hey, maybe I'm just being a pessimist. Maybe you explain it better in your following five point action plan. So again, just gonna take a deep breath and exhale the pettiness. Okay, let's go. One. Create a policy that prohibits parents from using their children for monetary gain on social media platforms. Uh, okay. Again, so <laughs> a vague concept called a policy with language that only specifically mentions parents without any sort of, without any clarification on what the definition of a parent would be in executing this policy and enforcing it. Okay. Uh, again, who is making the policy? Who is responsible for this? Is it, is it in like, what's it about? Like, how, how does it work? What does it affect? What are the edge cases? Who needs to approve it? What, what are the mechanisms? Who, what does it affect? And so on. Also, are there policies in place like this already? Ready? Have you researched that? Or is there any kind of legislation that has already been discussed or is being discussed or has or is about to be proposed or has been passed or blocked that could be used as a framework for this mythical policy? Because that might be something you might want to, I don't know, maybe include? Just a thought. Also, what happened to the pretend bill that you and your cabal of ugly were working on? and follow-up question. I'm assuming this is angled at social media companies, right? So you're asking multiple multi-billion dollar privately owned and run for-profit tech companies to make a nebulous policy that goes against their own business models. Am I understanding that correctly? Again, maybe I'm just jumping the gun and you go into more detail. So let's just go straight to action point number two. I'm sure it's gonna clear it up. Two, establish a reporting mechanism that allows users to report instances of parents exploiting their children on social media platforms for monetary gain. A lot of repetition, a lot of just repeating the same point with a little different uh, phrasing. So again, <laughs> who is responsible for this mechanism? Is it a reporting feature run by individual governments? Uh, and if so, is this at a, at a federal level or is this at a state and provincial level? If it's a human rights related issue, is it a human rights level related issue? Like what are like the, the levels and layers of this? If not, what incentive is there for multiple, again, separate tech companies like Google and Meta and TikTok and Twitter and so on and so forth to do this? Because keep in mind, this reporting system is a feature request and either the taxpayers are gonna be paying for this, which, Good luck. Or it'll be funded by the corporations. So let's say that it's gonna be the corporations. They're all gonna self-govern. You're asking corporations to spend likely hundreds of millions of dollars to create a reporting system so that people can report parents, whatever that means, for putting their children 
onto social media or into social media content for money, sponsorships, and likes. Am I understanding that correctly? Let's ignore everything about defining the policy, like who's responsible for it, and let's ignore the language about what constitutes a parent. How do you even define what exploitation is when it comes to social media content? Because there are conflicting opinions, again, because they're opinions and it's legal still. So what constitutes exploitation that would, so what forms of exploitation would constitute a violation. For example, if I made a TikTok video of me dancing with my kid and I somehow earned money from that or I got a free item from a company or whatever, or I got like a million likes and views, is that exploitation? What if I don't earn money or I don't get a ton of views or I get nothing out of it and I just, I posted a silly TikTok, would that video still be eligible to be reported, could I still get in trouble for it? Is that still exploitation? What are the metrics? What are the concrete definitions that would go into updating terms of service agreements and community guidelines of these social media platform companies? And what would determine which kinds of content are considered exploitative and which kinds aren't? Because again, it's an opinion. So how would these companies enforce an opinion? Especially if their monetized users aren't breaking the law, breaking existing terms of service agreements or community guidelines. What is their incentive? Especially when they're making money off of those monetized users. You are essentially asking these companies to invest a ton of money into making a feature that would prevent them from making money. That would never get greenlit unless they were forced to do it through government legislation. And that's assuming that that legislation would get passed without them lobbying against it. And even then, <laughs> they would likely find workarounds. So yeah, let's keep going. Three, conduct regular audits to identify and remove content that violates the policy. Who, who's doing this? Who or what entity would be conducting these audits? Is this a government agency? Cause again, that's taxpayers dollars. That's a whole training thing. Or are these corporations expected to self govern this? Because <laughs> that is putting a lot of faith into for-profit companies that literally do not care about human rights violations. So, you know. Not to mention that this would require substantial manpower if this system is not automated. So you would need to validate every single one of these violations to make sure they're valid. So let's assume that they don't do that and they just use an automated system, kind of like, let's say, the automated copyright strike system that YouTube has. Then what? Can people counterclaim? What happens if your content was falsely flagged? What happens then? What are the metrics? Again, also, let's assume that each of these companies must write an algorithm or some, automate some form of system to do this. That also requires money and manpower for feature developments. That could take years, depending on <laughs> how fucked up their system already is to add new pieces onto it, because you would be surprised. My partner works in tech and oh my God. Legacy code, y'all. Legacy fucking code. It's just a bunch of broken shit built on top of more broken shit. So once more, money is being spent on a system that is arbitrary at best and will cost these companies revenue. So what incentive do they have to do this other than to appease your moral outrage? The answer, by the way, is zero. They're, they have absolutely no reason to do this or to regulate it. They have no legal reason to do this. There's no need for ass covering. So they're not going to do it. It's a nice idea, though. Four, impose strict penalties, including account suspension or termination for users who violate the policy. Again, what constitutes a violation? What sorts of content are worthy of account suspension uh, versus account termination or being banned entirely from a platform by their IP or whatever? Because this sounds really nice on paper. I'm sure your followers, Nora, are gonna be very pleased with this and you're all patting yourselves on the back, but this is a high level concept at best. This is, this is, this is, an elevator pitch, and it's not even a good one. It's certainly not worth backing, conceptually, without at least a well thought out framework that you can pitch alongside it. Also, why should these penalties be strict right out of the gate outside of your moral outrage? 
Ignoring the authoritarian approach to that for a policy that is based solely on morality, it's just purely unreasonable. Making content that features children for monetary gain is not even on the same level as like showing porn or SA or extreme violence. Those things result in account termination. Most examples of child exploitation that you are talking about, the monetary kind where the kids are just performing on camera because their parents are making them, or they're just constantly being filmed, they don't, they don't compare. And unless that content was dangerous, illegal, or broke terms of service and community guidelines, they are comparatively apples and fucking bananas. It's bananas. Let's move on. <laughs> Five, work with child welfare organizations to educate parents on the dangers of exploiting their children on social media platforms for monetary gain. That sounds real nice, don't it? But my question is, because of course I have a fucking question, child welfare organizations such as what? CPS? CAS here in Canada? Which organizations? And what are their jurisdictions? I'm just wondering. So if those questions are annoying you, I got bad news for you because I'm going easy on you. Clearly you've never been in a boardroom before. So ignoring that, how are they going to educate people? Because besties, you all go on and on and on about exploitation this and exploitation that and that's an exploitation and that's an exploitation and your mom's an exploitation. But exploitation on social media in the way that you guys talk about performing for monetary gain outside of regulated industries like it, like the entertainment industry and like the film industry, that only affects a very small percentage of our global population. That's not to say that it's not a problem because it's a problem. There are valid fucking concerns about some of the social media content creators out there who are exploiting their kids. I'm not invalidating that. But exploitation, like the kind you guys talk about, it's an end product. It is the end product of a larger problem that none of you fucking chuckleheads ever talk about, which is oversharing and privacy laws related to what parents and adults in general share about their children and children that they know on the fucking internet. Oversharing affects all of us. If you have access to the internet, you are affected by this. This affects you. This is something you need to know about. Not just parents like Alicia fucking Doherty or Just the Bells or whoever the fucking else who has a platform as a mommy vlogger. They're not the only ones. If you want to educate people, Lenora, educate them on oversharing because all of the reasons you gave like exploitation, cyberbullying, and invasion of privacy applies to fucking everyone, regardless of whether you're profiting or not. That is where you start, ma'am. Exploitation is possible because privacy laws regarding how adults share information and personal data about minors onto the internet is still not robust enough. If you want to make actual fucking change, that's where you start. And banning parents from posting children onto the internet is not the fucking solution. That's not gonna stop it from happening, especially when it's not illegal. <laughs> the real issue here, the thing that needs to be educated on is conversations about consent, how information is represented, conversations about boundaries and respect and how you frame your children online and then how those things can lead to issues like exploitation and cyberbullying and an invasion of privacy, including for monetary gain. These five action points might sound nice on paper. They might look nice in your little change.org petition, but they are performative. This is hot fucking air. It is a whole hell of a lot of posturing without any actual substance to make this possible in any meaningful way. You are collecting signatures that will result in nothing but a nice feel good pat on the back and likely, and the real reason behind it, more subscriptions and views for you. You are basically pissing into the wind. I'm just calling it like I see it. Finally, Anora, your campaign to end exploitation lacks personal touch. The story behind you and Brandy deciding to lead this movement. Why are you doing this? Why do you care so goddamn much to the point of trying haphazardly to create some form of reform? Understand that I am actually trying to help you. I think that you have painted yourself into a corner with this ending exploitation, we are a Nora thing. 
unfortunately, this video, the one, this one right here that you're probably not watching and your like little minions are giving you the cliff notes of, it is chocked full of content suggestions. Because if you can answer even a fraction of my questions, you might actually be able to start the revolution that you want. My recommendation is to use your platform to educate your community and the mommy vlogger community at large. Find a balance between snark and having a good time and actually touching on real problems. But more so, find your voice before you attempt to give a voice to the voiceless. Just know that in order to find your voice, to really be able to speak your truth, you're gonna have to get vulnerable. And I'm not convinced that's something you're ready to do yet, but I want to be proven wrong. So prove me wrong, Anora. I look forward to seeing how you change. And I really, truly mean it when I say that I hope that this isn't just another performance because I'm a pessimist at heart. Anyway, that's all for me. Bye.